praise Jesus. Yes. Oh, Napaka. Napaka. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, lift your voice to glorify the name of the Lord. Give him all the praise that is due in his name. All the worship, Jesus. Worship you, God. Because you are great, yes, you are. Holy One. You walked upon the sea, you raised the dead. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything we hear about you is great. Yes, you are great, yes, you are. Holy One. You walked upon the sea. You raise the dead, yes, Lord. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Oh, everything we see about you is grand. Say you are great, yes, you are. Holy one, you walked upon the sea. You walked upon the sea, you raise the dead, yes.
Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And let's have our seat in his presence in Jesus' name. Is someone excited to be in the house of God today? If you know that you are in for an extraordinary encounter, if you know today is your day, let me hear a reckless shout of joy. Every time God has something special and new for us, can someone feel his presence already? Something is about to happen that will blow someone's mind. I was in a meeting yesterday and we're taught that the presence brings peace and the presence brings provision. As we were singing, I was hearing provision. I don't know who that is for, but someone here, that need is met already. When his presence comes down, he comes to give you something. Who is receiving something already? Shout a big shout of joy again. Because I want to fast track the service. I know the choir has a special number, right? You've done it already. So we're going to have our offering. But as the offering is going on, the choir will give us a special number. Amen? So that's the atmosphere continues. Amen. And our offerings, basket will be going around. The tithe will be brought to the front. And um, the special seeds will be dropped on the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. And once you use, as we are giving our offering, to usher him his glory. Amen. His glory. Michael, I think you you give us it's a song you sing. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. Thank you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you, Lord. Is you, Lord. All I need is you. All I need is you.
you have your tithes, you can come forward and drop your tithes. If you have your seed, you can come forward and drop your seed. In Jesus' name. What a beautiful name it is. A beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus.
is the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise, we give you glory. Thank you, Father, for all these offerings and the tithes and the seeds. Receive them, Lord, and release blessings upon the church. Let there be great harvest in the house. Let his offering be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. This month, our theme is the upper room. Hallelujah. The upper room. And I know that on that day when they went into the upper room, they closed the door. I'm, I'm sure they did not give the Lord any pounds, dollar, or naira. But their offering was their praise. Their offering to God was their heart of love. Their offering in the upper room was a hunger for him. Thank for the offerings, but the Lord wants to receive another offering right now. The offering of worship. The offering of, of gratitude. The offering of a heart burning for him. If you are here and you want to give God that offering that will be acceptable by Him, I want you to lift up your hand to heaven. Because we want to offer God a, a offering that He cannot reject, an offering that He cannot turn back, the kind of offering that causes rain to fall. That changes seasons and ushers in the glory of the kingdom of God. Just let your voice begin to worship Him right now with a offering. Worship Him with a offering. With the words of your mouth, lift it up and begin to exalt Him when you worship.
to invite special man and woman of God that the Lord has sent to us today. All the way from United Kingdom. Their man is a man and a woman of God that they've sold their hearts for Jesus. Traveled all over the world with no other message apart from Jesus. Jesus. And one thing I know that today, someone here will have an encounter. I'm so confident about what will happen here today. The Lord has been doing wonderful things in this house. This morning, my wife and myself were worshiping, and the song that we that brought us down 
in his presence is all I want is Jesus. Jesus. That's all I want. You captured our hearts. Of all the songs that the choir could, could sing, did, did I tell you to sing that song? Did I meet you? Of all the songs they could sing, of all the songs they could sing, you have captured my heart because you my heart with your love Ooh, you have captured my heart cause you my heart with your love you have captured my heart cause you Thank you, you are God in the house already. I feel the love in my heart. I feel his love in my heart. I feel it right now. Yeah. 
tears down my face. And I was saying to the Lord, why let me introduce the guests so I can go my seat and cry. No, yeah. <laughs> why now? Why not here? Yeah, let me go down. I, I I tried so hard. I'm trying so hard. Trying so hard. I had a chat with Pastor Lippitz yesterday about um, see, as much chat I said um, the theme of our month is um, the upper room and he screamed. He said he has a lot of messages I have been battling between which one. And the, the Lord kept it, pressing his heart. Fire. in the upper room where was when the Holy Ghost came as fire. He screamed. He couldn't believe it. This meeting is a setup for someone. Just lift your hands to heaven and just close your eyes. And say the Lord, I want all. All that you have for me today. I want all. I don't want to leave it the same way I came. Everything that Halon and Dona has come with, Lord, I want all of it. All of your presence, all of your power, and all of your glory. Touch me today. Let me have a life transforming encounter. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Let the new house give a joyful welcome to Pastor Alon and Dona Lippin. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Jesus. to stay there all morning and enjoy the excellence of the worship team and the musicians. Um, when you learn to host the presence, you learn to host the magnificence, provision, joy, healing, deliverer. All that is God is in his presence. When David was said, seek my face. Basically, God said, seek my presence. Moses said, do not send us out without your presence, because what else will distinguish us from everyone else? What will make us look different from everyone else if you don't send your presence? And the word presence is panim, which means his face. The face of God, the nature of God, the fullness of God is contained in his presence. The first thing that David did Almost the first thing that David did when he became king was to get the Ark of the Covenant and bring it back and place it into the center of Jerusalem. He didn't speak to the generals about reorganizing the army. He didn't go to the bankers to reorganize the finances of the kingdom. He got the presence, the manifest presence of God and placed it in the center of Jerusalem and transformed Israel from a nation that was oppressed, attacked, to a global superpower because the resting place of God was at the heart of the nation. And I say all that to say this, the new house, I believe, is a resting place of his presence. Because if your heart is turned towards him, if your face is turned towards him, then you're looking at his presence, you're not looking at the problems. If you're looking at the problems, you will see the problems. But if you look at his presence, you will see the provision and the promise to pursue his nature and his goodness in your lives. So I, 
If you guys would like to come home with me, I'm leaving about <laughs> nine o'clock tonight. Come and sit up in my living room, Will. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bless you guys. <clears throat> <laughs> One thing, I, I, I am a musician. I've been a musician since I was a teenager. Please take your seats. And uh, I really appreciate excellence. <laughs> and one thing I notice when we come to Nigeria is the excellence of the musicians. And this band especially, and these singers especially, you are excellent. And it's, Proverb says, our excellence will bring us an audience before kings. So if you want to influence people, we need to be excellent. So poverty won't influence anyone, but God's blessing on our lives will show the world how good God is. So uh, I have a message this morning. As, thank you so much, Pastor, for inviting us. Sorry, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm still... I can, yeah, <laughs> more Lord. <laughs> My heart is warmed. My head is on fire. I am refreshed, I am renewed, because I'm having an encounter with Jesus. Uh, my name is Alan, this is Donna. We've been married for 31 years. <laughs> we get to travel the nations together. We pastored for 20 years in Southampton, England, and uh, God had put a mark on our lives and has called us out, and two years ago, we laid down our pastorate to go to the nations. And it is our honor and privilege to be here today. We thank you again, pastors, for inviting us and giving us this platform. People that you, you've never seen us before, you've never heard of us. And as a pastor, I know that's a big deal, to give someone this, to give away your microphone. There's, there's trust involved. But what we see and what we know, uh, in the kingdom, we are family. And this is family. We feel so at home here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> at home. So, before I get into the message this morning, my, I want to release my wife, Donna, to release a word. Um, she's a prophet to the nations, and we have a lovely uh, synergy together and flow together in the Holy Spirit. And uh, we need to hear the voice of God in our midst. And... All of us can hear his voice, amen? All of us can prophesy, amen? Uh, but some are called to be prophets, and they carry a different office. And, and Donna is one who's pursued the presence of God, waited on him, and invested in her gift, and God has raised her up. And it's my honor to introduce you to her. It's an honor to be here and it's an honor to worship with you. I just feel his presence so much and it's, uh, it's, it's just glorious. And I, I feel I have a word for the pastor, um, but also for the church. But could Pastor T uh, Tapira and his lovely wife come forward? <clears throat> yeah. I really sense the Father's pleasure for you both. The Father is so absolutely delighted with you, with the way that you have positioned yourself, postured yourself to serve him, that your heart has never been to rule and to reign over people, but to elevate them, to encourage them, to build them up, to lift them up, to exalt them, and to release them. And God is saying, I am so proud of you, son. I'm so proud of you, daughter, for being willing to lay down your lives to follow and pursue me. And God has seen your hearts. We've even heard today how you've just worshipped him and you've just wanted just him. And God is saying, because you have seeked me first, you have sought my kingdom first, now I'm going to add to you. Now I'm going to add strength to you. 
Now I am going to bring a provision to you that is going to astound you. You've already seen the supernatural provision. I've heard it this morning, your testimony of how God has provided for you. But God is saying that what you have seen is a taste of what is to come. And it's only been a birthing. It's only been a beginning. Because what you have learned in that season is to have faith, to believe in the supernatural provision of God. And it was a testing ground for you to trust him. And you have proved yourself faithful. So now this season that is coming to you is going to enrich your lives, but it's going to enrich the lives of this congregation. And I just see that you are going to be blessed like you've never been blessed before. You are going to be astounded like you've never been astounded before. You are going to experience the provision of God, not just financially, not just in uh, physical uh, things and resources, but there is going to be an abundance that is going to be poured out on you. And I believe that God is just loving on you right now, that he's pouring his love, he's pouring his presence, and he's going to release some power. And the power is going to unlock certain doors in this region where you have been pushing and you have been finding the doors have not been open, even in a unity with amongst other churches and it's been I want to bless these people but I just can't seem to get a a spiritual connection with them and God is saying that what I'm investing in you in this time is the abundance of community it's the abundance to be able to relate it's the abundance to be able to give to add honor to be able to bless other leaders in this area and you are going to find that suddenly there are heart-to-heart connections there is a DNA, there is a spirit to spirit thing that God is going to do and you will find favor like you've never known before and the doors are going to be open to you and I believe that you are going to get invites to speak into other churches, that you're going to get a a place that is being prepared for you where a platform is opening up and the pulpit is being uh, uh, given to you and it's a place of honor that you're going to receive because the favor of the Lord is upon you and you are meant to shine he has made you glorious he's done a wonderful work in investing in you and creating and developing a character of you where your pillars in the house of God and he trusts you to represent him well and so he says because you have sought me first and because you want to make me famous so I am elevating you to be in a place of influence over many many people that they will see your hearts they will know the hand of God is upon your life and you are going to be so blessed to see the fruit that is coming because of your influence is increasing so we just bless that over your life right now in the name of Jesus let's just give God a hand right now for what he's doing in these pastors life But for the rest of you, I really just had that sense this morning of um, the the presence of God and and how you've been pursuing him, how you have been tarrying and waiting, that you've been in this upper room and you've been expecting God to come through for you. And the, the scripture that came to mind was one of Elijah. And it was in that time when there was drought in the land. And God had said to him um, that the the drought was going to come, the rain was going to stop. And it lasted for three years. But towards the end of the three years... God said to Elijah that the rain was coming. And there was a word that was released. It was a promise from heaven. And the word was that rain was going to come. So what he did is he got down on his knees and he prayed. That he began to look in the spirit to see that rain. He began to lift up his expectation to believe that the rain was coming. That there was a shift that was going to take place in that nation. And he prayed and he prayed and he believed that the rain was going to come. So he sent his servant out to go and look. What's the weather like? What's the weather like? And 
and uh, the servant went out. And he, uh, first of all, nothing happened. But, but Elijah had a word of God. And he knew that something was about to happen. And so he sent his servant out again and again until the servant came and said, I see a cloud in the distance. And it's the size of a man's fist. It wasn't very big, but it was enough. It was enough for Elijah to stand up knowing that the rain was coming, and then he began to run back to King Ahab to tell him the news. And before he got back, the rain had come powerfully. And I believe that what God is wanting to do for you as a church is to release the fire of heaven, to release the floodgates of heaven, to release the rain of heaven. And it's going to come upon you. It's going to come in a way where it's not just a trickle. It's going to come in a way that it's not just a drizzle, but it's going to come in a torrent. It's going to come in a flood. And once we've been in, in Nigeria, we've been in meetings where the rain has just come torrentially and it's just been a lovely sound of being able to hit uh, the rooftops and resound in the congregation in the room and I believe that that is what God is promising to you that there has been areas of need in your life there's been areas of drought in your life where you have been waiting for the answer you have been waiting for the breakthrough you have been waiting for God to do something to release something and you've been looking for that cloud the size of a man's fist but God is saying it is coming it is coming He's already sent it. It is on his way. And you are going to see some breakthroughs. You are going to see the answers to some of your prayers. Some of the desires of your heart are going to be released from heaven. And I believe also that there is something about um, this supernatural provision that you have had in establishing the work here, that there is something on your church about um, the gift of giving. And uh, the, the scripture that comes to mind is Malachi, where he says, test me in this, give to me, because if you do that, then you will see the storehouses of heaven opened up for you. And I believe that you are about to move into a whole new level of a spirit of generosity. And the spirit of generosity is going to just open up a portal. It's going to open up a open heaven over you and there is going to be the abundance of rain that is going to come upon each and every one of you corporately that you're going to all come into this privilege and honor of experiencing the presence of God and experiencing his love experiencing his power and we know that when the kingdom of heaven comes in our midst then we can expect to see the miraculous breakout we can expect to see the supernatural become natural in our midst as we look and elevate the name of Jesus. And I believe that God is going to come upon you and he is going to release heaven to earth. In heaven there is no sickness. In heaven there is no disease. In heaven there is no financial lack. In heaven there is no suffering. In heaven there is no weeping. Can you imagine what it would be like for heaven to come to earth? Would you, can you imagine what it would be like if not one of the members of your congregation or even your household is sick because you can call on the name of Jesus and see the heaven come? Because God is wanting to promise you that no matter what you want, that if you know that he hears you and you pray according to his will, you can have what you ask. And God is saying, I am going to do something amongst you that's going to astound you. I'm going to do something amongst you that's going to bless you. It's going to encourage you. It's going to enrich your lives. And it's not just so that you have a blessed time in a congregation, but that you carry the glory of God outside. You carry it outside to the streets and to people that you meet in your ordinary life because you are meant to have a, a transforming encounter yes. with God so that you can be the Jesus and represent him to somebody out there so that they can get blessed like you get blessed, so that you have more than enough to give away. Can you imagine having too much that you don't know what to do with it? 
that you are meant to give out of the overflow. You are meant to have so much that it just bubbles up out of you and is just released elsewhere. So that is the Father's intention for you, to not hold it back, not to have that give me, give me, give me, but to have a heart of give, 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 give. Give to others because the more you give, the more you receive. The more you give, the more you receive. The more you give, the more you receive. Give of your time, give of your love, give of your energies, give of yourself, give the essence of you, give your love, give your care, give your heart because the more you give, the more you receive is love. The more you give, the more you receive. The more you give financially, the more you will be blessed financially. It's reaping and sowing. So I just want to bless you with that because God hand is so on you. There is a favor here and I believe that favor is going to increase and that other churches are not going to be envious but they're going to celebrate. I believe that there is going to be something that is happening where there is a unity in the body of Christ where everybody is going to want and taste and see that God is good and they're going to hear reports of what's happening with you and it's going to lead them to pursue God for their own lives, for their own churches so it's not that they will be envious of what God's doing it will just lead them and it will draw them closer to the father so be encouraged you are influencers of those in influence influencers of those in influence so we just bless that in your life so so before Alan comes on to speak I, I want you just to stand up if you respond if uh, if you want to respond if you want that breakthrough in your lives if you want God to do what he is asking you to do yes I just want to pray for you father I just thank you for the glory round I thank you, Father, that you so love this church. You love their passion for you, their pursuit of you. You love the way they pray. You love the way they tarry. You love the way they wait. And Father, you, you would want all churches to be like that, to be hungrily pursuing your presence. So Lord, I pray, Father, that you would come right now and visit them. You would come right now and touch their hearts. You would raise up their expectation that there is the cloud the size of a fist and it's within sight. Father, we just thank you that your promise is that it is on the way. It is on the way. And it was so quick for Elijah that he got soaking wet before he got home. It was that quick. And so, Father, we're praying for an acceleration. We're praying praying for a quickening. We're praying, Father, that that cloud would just come quicker and quicker and quicker and that the rains will begin to come. Lord, I pray, Father, that each one who is longing for a breakthrough in their lives, whatever it is, that they would re receive it right now, that there would be an unlocking in the spiritual realm and that, that those um, bowls in heaven that have just been receiving the prayers of the saints that the angels are holding up in revelation would be tipped out over them right now in the name of yeah. Jesus that there would be an open heaven where blessings would come upon blessings upon blessing that there would be answers to prayers that there would be dreams come true that their hearts desires would be come to them and they would just know the love of God they would know the pleasure of God they would know the favor of God. They would be enriched like they've never been enriched. And so I just bless this church right now with the presence of God because in the presence of God, there is power to heal. There is power to restore. There is power to save. And there is power to deliver. And we thank you that all the answers are in the name of Jesus. And whatever, whatever area of lack there is right now, that there is plenty in heaven and there is plenty in the, in the arms of God and he wants to pour it out over you. So Lord, we just release that right now. The bounty of heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, let's give the Lord a big shout. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Hope you're feeling excited. Do take your seats. Yay God. <laughs> God is good all the time. Um, some of you are convinced about that. <laughs> God is good all the time. Amen. Yeah, I'm just checking. He's still awake. Still with us. 
Uh, I'm excited. The last time I preached this message, I didn't get very far through it because the fire of God, God didn't wait for me to finish my message before he wanted to turn up in power and touch people's lives and transform them and inspire them and encourage them. And uh, so I'm, let's just see how far we get. I'm, I'm aware of the time as well. So good job, Donna. You're going to keep me short today. <clears throat> William Booth was the founder, the founder of the Salvation Army. Are you familiar with the Salvation Army here? Yeah. And uh, in 1894, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of his conversion, he wrote a hymn. And the hymn was called Send the Fire. And that is the title of my message. And, and we had this moment, as the pastor was saying, that he said, we've had a, a month of focusing on the upper room. And I'm thinking, well, that's... Isn't that serendipitous? There's a lovely word. Because the message I keep coming back to to bring this morning, the, the message that the Lord has put on my heart is the message, send the fire again. The first verse of this hymn is, O God of burning, cleansing flame, send the fire. Your blood-bought gift today we claim, send the fire today. Look down and see this waiting host and send the promised Holy Ghost. We need another Pentecost. Send the fire today. You know, when God wants the bride to pray, he puts the prayer into the words of songs, which we were singing this morning. Prayers, decrees, petitions, and we sing them out over and over again. I do encourage you, I'm sure that prophecy was recorded, to visit again, pray over it in small groups, ask God for the manifestation of it in your lives and engage with it. Say yes. Say yes to God. The most radical thing we can do any day of the week is to hear God's voice and obey it. Anybody? One on the front row. We've got revival breaking out on the front row. The most radical thing we can do any day is hear God's voice and obey it. Yes, Alan. I'm with you. I'm with you, Alan. I like to have fun. I hope that's okay because you know that joy is one third of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Yeah, okay. Are you with me yet? Yeah. You're at the back. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, beautiful people. Okay, see. I believe that God is going to pour his fire in this room today. He's going to activate gifts of the Spirit in this place today. He's going to come and strengthen and equip you today. And I believe that, not just because I'm hoping for it, I'm kind of giving mental assent to the promise of God. I believe it because he's done it time and time and time again. See, that song that was written so many years ago was taken by Lyndall Cooley, the worship leader at the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida, and he sang it again. He rearranged it and sang it again. Lord, send the fire again. In 94, 95, and going, following on from there, there was an outpouring of heaven, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Florida and up in Toronto, Canada. That outpouring of the Holy Spirit came across the waters and impacted us in the little church that Donna and I got married in, we sat at the back of the room. There was a man that had been there from Holy Trinity Brompton. That's the, the church that wrote the Alpha course. And I know you guys have Alpha in Nigeria. That's because of what God did. Some of the fruit of the outpouring of the Spirit is the Alpha course and the marriage course, which has gone all around the world, has discipled nations, and has discipled prisoners and discipled children in understanding who Jesus is. This is amazing. This is just a tiny fruit of what God did there. And we were impacted by the Holy Spirit and by the fire of the Holy Spirit and by the transference of the Father's blessing from one place to another. It started there and you could go and grab hold of it, put your torch in the fire, bring it home and stick it into the hearts of people and they would be set on fire as well. And God's still doing it. There are missionaries all over the world who would say, I am here now because of what God did for me when I went to Pensacola, or what God did for me when I went to Toronto. And Toronto isn't a one-off. It is connected to 
a previous move of God, which is connected to a previous move of God. And you can trace these moves of God all over the world, all the way back to Pentecost, all the way back to the upper room, all the way back to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The fire fell then, and it is falling now. I'm going to tell you a story, and then I'm going to deliver as much of my message as I can in Jesus' name. (laughs) So Donna and I, 10 years after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, spent thousands thousands of miles to go where the fire was burning because we were hungry. We were thirsty for more. We tasted and seen of his goodness. We'd experienced his nature. We'd rested and been refreshed in his presence. We'd hosted regional meetings where people would come all around just to rest and be refreshed and renewed. We called it soaking. You'd actually humble yourself. You'd lay down. Imagine if you said, come to a meeting. We're all going to lay on the floor. Would you come? But we did. People came. We'd start worshipping and then the presence of God would fall and people would just be overcome, be overwhelmed. And you can look at these manifestations historically through every denomination that's come. There's been a fresh move of God and then... um, and, it, and you'll read the same language, people swooning, people 